Welcome to another episode of Regional Italian Cuisine, of course. My name is Caterina Borsato, and on this program, we are celebrating Christmas, Natale as we know it in Italy. Now, of course, Natale is all about religion, I guess, but most importantly, for the kids at home, we talk about celebration, we talk about gifts, we talk about food, we talk about the traditions that a lot of those migrants, all those years ago, uh, I guess, brought with them, and of course, still carry it on today. Now. There's something kind of interesting, because on this program we're actually going to be introducing a friend of mine who hails from Greece. Um, and I guess the relevance to regional Italian cuisine is this. Uh, the southern part of Italy, of course, was colonised by the Greeks. And uh, in fact, Puglia is actually the leftover peninsula of the Magna Grecia. So you have to understand that there's a lot of similarities between Greek uh, food and southern Italian. In the north, it's the French and the Swiss, but certainly in the South, it's certainly going to do with a bit of the Greeks and the Arabs. And some of the recipes we're going to be presenting to you today uh, is going to actually bring in some of the wonderful spices and nuts that are all reminiscent of that period. A lot of viewers, I would love to welcome Paris. The obligatory kiss, of course. Benvenuta, thank, thank you for you. joining our show. Now tell me your surname. Panagatopoulos. Oh, I can't say that, you know it's that. Easy. All right. <laughs> now, of course, Paris has a beautiful and interesting story. Um, notwithstanding that she's made all these fantastic uh, sweets. But let's talk about your family. Now, your family hails from southern Greece. Southern Greece, Peloponnesus. Um, yes, uh, Georgia being your mama. Georgia, yes. And Alessandros. Alexandros. Alexandros. I get all the intonations wrong. Anyway. <laughs> um, now, of course, they um, uh, were, uh, your mother basically uh, came to Australia in 1959. That's correct, yes. Never really worked because she went to the School of Etiquette where she, she was, was doing teaching. a bit of teaching. Yes. Whereby your father, who was one of many children, and of course at the age of nine his father passed on, and uh, he had to basically go out and work. Yes, his uncle took him and took his him cousins in. and um, taught him pastry. About pastry. Mm. So he had his start over there in Greece, and then when he came out in 1962, yes. basically what happened? Well, he started his he started um, at the first cake shop in Richmond. Yes. Um, All the Greeks ended up in ended Richmond. Up in Richmond, and yeah. the second one uh, went on his own with mum, and yeah. opened uh, on Glenfrey Road in Hawthorne. Right. So in Hawthorne, you had two shops, and I think yes. roughly from about 1971 through to 2003, Three. Uh, it was a family business. That that's, was the first one. That's the first one. What was one? that called? Uh, Chez Alec, Chez Continental Alec. Cakes, and yes. then in '95 we opened uh, the new shop, known Alexis, as a family. And that was a family one. Mm. So of course you you are basically a third generation pastry chef from within your family, which That's is right. just amazing. Yes. Um, and so we want to talk about your journey because obviously your parents had a very important mm. um, influence. But so you were basically working uh, in the family shop. I did, yes. And then you went and uh, did a cooking, cooking course, an apprenticeship yeah. through William Anglis and yes. worked in various international hotels around Melbourne. That's correct, yes. And also some fine dining restaurants, restaurants as well. As well yeah. So you got your hand in pastry and in food. And in However, room. your calling was always uh, pastry. It's, it's in my blood, definitely. It's in my blood. So <laughs> definitely, you know, this yes. is the important thing, yes. I guess, that you learn all this from your father. And yes. of course, at, you, I, I guess your father introduced uh, sweets to Australia or Melbourne, mm -hmm. um, things that we'd never really known before. Definitely, back in the 70s and, and the late 60s, uh, very few people knew about the Greek sweets, but the Greeks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And now they're known to the world. Now and of course, there's a proliferation of uh, restaurants and pastry shops. These migrants have been absolutely amazing. And yes. as you said to me, you know, you take your head off to those early That's migrants right. who actually went into business because they didn't have English. They only had this small group of friends and, and family. That's right. And uh, really, I think it takes a lot of guts to go into a uh, business sense, but they were yeah. showing their craft and we have all been uh, the very wonderful recipients of their mm. fantastic culture. Anyway, what's going to be the first recipe? We're going to start out with kurabiedis. Now, can you say that? So, kurabiedis. Kurabiedis, which are the, the little uh, butter shortbreads. All right. So the first thing you need to do for the kurabied, and ideally the night before, clarify some butter. So if you need, say, for example, 300 grams of butter, I'd put close to about 500. No stirring, and that will happen. It won't take very long at all. So you can see it's actually separated. It doesn't take long at all. OK, now we don't want it boiling, so we're going to move away from the stove. With a ladle, scoop out the clear butter. OK, now I've got my clarified butter in the fridge. If, if I did it overnight, it would be out on the room temperature. Now the next thing I'm going to do is do my caramelised almonds. Get your sugar 
and your whole almonds right, and stir it to caramelize and slowly right don't walk away when you're actually using the um the sugar the dry caramel it must be stirred the whole time because your 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 almonds will get burnt spots and you don't want that and we just put a touch of water don't not too much just a touch so maybe about a a, a teaspoon just a, a couple of teaspoons, not more than that. So we'll let that caramelize. We're nice and we get a really nice crunch through our whatever. Once that crystallizes, it starts caramelizing, it'll come into a nice shiny smooth caramel. Okay, now they've reached the colour that I like, nice golden brown colour, nice and shiny. You can either Pour them onto a mat. If you don't have a mat, that's fine. You can use just a piece of silicon paper and just spread them up nicely because we're actually going to cut them up and put them into our kurabie. Okay, now we've got our caramelised almonds on our mat. We'll move them aside just to cool down. So while they're cooling down, I'll cut the vanilla bean. So you've got a nice vanilla bean right in the centre. Okay, now the first thing we do is use our clarified butter. You can actually see it's not too, too hard, it's just at the right temperature. So it'll be perfect for creaming. Right? So into our bowl, a clarified butter into the bowl. The next thing we'll do is get our icing sugar and sift our icing sugar all into the bowl. Okay, so we just sift in our icing sugar into our clarified butter. Then we add our vanilla bean into the mixture. And then we're going to start creaming it by hand. Put a glove on one hand and just cream that mixture to very light, really light and, and, and um, pale. It'll take about 15 minutes by hand. Okay, I think the cream is just about done now. Now I can slowly add in my cognac, which is again, as I said, the Medaxa cognac, the Greek cognac. Just slowly pull that in. And you put it in, in stages. Put a little bit in, mix it into your butter and icing mixture, and then add a little bit more. You don't want to add it all at once. So in stages, it won't take long. Take a couple of stages to put it through. Right, so it blends in nicely. Okay, now I'd like to put a little bit, of, just half a teaspoon of some baking powder into my flour and I'm going to sift that into the butter mixture. By sifting the flour, we're actually aerating so our mixture will be even lighter, so it won't be heavy. So always try and sift any flour for any recipe you use. We're going to mix that in all together. That's the stage we want to have it. Right? Drink, so it can come together when you squeeze it in your hand. Okay, we'll put the, the mixture aside and we're, now we're going to chop up our almonds, which are nice and cold now. Okay, when you're cutting these nuts, they are quite, quite hard. They, they, they are quite um, candy on the outside. So be very careful. Use a sharp knife and just use this kind of motion. Put your hand over the top and just slowly cut them, as I said, nice and chunky. Now, if you actually have a look, you get nice big pieces in them. So we're going to actually get these and put it straight into our mixture. So it goes all straight into our mixture and we can just mix it through our dough. Okay, now I'm going to actually get this mixture onto my bench. Like so, just move that along the side and bring it all together. Okay, so we take a small amount, roll it into a long cylinder and then we're going to cut them up. Just like so. Get your plastic scraper, just cut them down. Makes it a little bit easier for you. Squeeze it into your hands, right? Roll it. You can feel the, the actual dough coming together onto the bench. No flour, I haven't used any flour, so there's no need to add flour. So once you get into a crescent shape, that's what you do. We're gonna put our rabia into the oven at 180 degrees, about 15, 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes. We'll check our kurabietas and let's see if they're ready. Oh, yes. Okay, beautiful. This is our 
curabia, the crescent shaped curabia, nice golden colour. We don't want them to go too dark, that's a perfect colour. Now that they're out of the oven, I'm going to dilute some rose water with a little bit of water into a bottle. And while they're still warm, we'll just spray it lightly, not too much, just to give it enough flavour. Let it cool down before we dust it with ice and sugar. Squeeze them all together so we can get our ice and sugar over them. Plenty of sugar. I do a good object. Just reminds you of Christmas. Paras, what a fantastic recipe. Um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, actually Dee had uh, a sample of that because I'd be having icing sugar all over my mouth. <laughs>